All right, welcome to Lesson 18, where I'm going to talk about nesting loops. There may be cases where you need a loop inside of a loop. And to that, I will use this example. So I have two for loops. The outer one is right here. I'm going to run this five times for values zero through four. And the inner one uses a different variable. Notice the outer one is using 4i. And inside of that, the work it's going to do is another loop. So what happens here? It's going to run this loop five times. But what's inside of that loop is going to run another three times. Well, 0, 1, and 2 are the values. So I should see a recursion. Not no, That's the wrong word for this. But I should see a loop within a loop so that I see values of i only incrementing every third value of j. Why would you use this? Well, you may be doing cross multiplication. You may be doing matrices. You may be doing arrays within arrays. You may, there's a number of reasons why you do this. And if I run that, I get i starts out as 0 and j starts out as 0. Then j increments to 1. I'm inside of that i loop, and it runs the, I, the j loop three times. There's the first one. There's the second one, there's the third one, and then it comes back and increments i and does j over again. 0, 1, 2. 0, 1, 2, and it does that for all five iterations of i, where i is 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So in total, that GS info statement gets run 15 times. And at the end, i is 5 and j is 3, so I know exactly how many times each one ran. So nesting loops is very easy, whether you're doing while loops or do while loops or for loops or a combination of any of them. Just be sure you're using different variables inside of each one to run each one and that those variables are managed properly. You're not reinitializing something inside of a loop itself, which could cause it to go to an infinite state. So that's it. I have a lab exercise for you on looping. So stick around. Bye.